What's going on, everybody? Welcome to GMI's World Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about the Monday Night Football game between the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots. Now, I want you guys to understand, Week 8, 2018, this, at this point in the season, we should know a lot about the teams going forward, right? We already know that Vegas thinks that the Patriots are going to the Super Bowl. And you can't blame Vegas for that, all right? So I want to get that out of the way. The next thing that I want to get out of the way is that we don't expect anything from the Buffalo Bills. And it's not hate on them or anything like that. We just don't expect anything from them. Like everybody, it was 25 to 6. It was an ugly game uh, throughout the, its entirety. But remember, guys, it's a division game. So they're very familiar with each other. Things are going to be like this. It's not always going to be a blowout. All right. So when you look at it and you thought they were fighting hard and it was like 9 to 6 and only field goals and things like that, you have to understand that those things are going to happen. All right. It's going to be close games. But, you know, down the stretch, you fully expect the Patriots to pull away. That's just the way that it goes, right? I want to point out a couple things because I was asked uh, specifically about Gronkowski and what do I think about him as far as the best tight ends in the National Football League. When Gronk is healthy, I think he's the best tight end in the National Football League. The issue is he gets nicked. He gets hurt. Uh, things happen throughout the time, um, you know, early in the season because he's so big. He's 6'6", and people hit him in the legs, the knees constantly, right? So he's con- – and then, you know, pretty much what happens is – he has these little tiny guys that are covering him for the most part, and they get away with a lot. Because if you watch the game film and you kind of analyze it, you'll see that he's pretty much getting held. Like a lot of receivers, the bigger receivers, Calvin Johnson, these guys, they get held on every play. But it's different for Gronk because he, like his agility and his athleticism for his size and the way that he has his speed for his position, it makes him very, very unique. The reason I bring that up is that real ridiculous catch that he got with the dude all over him, and he just, like, he didn't even jump. He just took it right out, you know what I'm saying? Kept the foot right in bounds and reviewed it. It was good. Those are the things that makes him, in my opinion, a really unstoppable force. And I understand what, uh, you know, the Jaguars cornerback, Jalen Ramsey, said about him not being that good. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, in my opinion, needs to shut up because he, uh, we're going to get to him in another, uh, you know, at another podcast, but he's not everything that he was choked up to be either. You know what I'm saying? Like, he... This guy is running his mouth, and his team sucks. And he, if he played against teams with better quarterbacks, they probably would not have any wins. Let me just say that. Because dudes are routing him up, and they're just not able to get the ball at that specific time. But we're not going to talk about Ramsey right now. We're just going to, you know, we'll save that for another day. But I just wanted to point that out because, um, you know, allegedly Belichick wanted to trade him. And it's not really allegedly because he actually said that it was true in one of the post-conferences that, yeah, but he said he would retire if he left Brady. This is the reasoning behind that, though. You know, Bill Belichick understands that it's better to get rid of them, you know, a year earlier than a year late. And he knows that Grunk is going to be not, you know, he's going to be nicked up. Things like that are going to happen. And he's not going to be able to, uh, you know, be out there when Bill Belichick needs him out there. Like, we need him out there all the time. And Bill is like, yo, bro, what are you doing? You hurt again? All right, you know what, bro? I'm about to get, I'm about to get rid of you. Okay, but when he plays and you see that impact... That's what changes the Patriots. Now, the other knock on that is Tom Brady did win the Super Bowl without Gronk. So it's not like you're saying that Tom Brady needs it, okay, you know, going forward. I just think that it's a better, um, I think it's better uh, for for the Patriots team if they are supposed to go to the Super Bowl because Edelman, Edelman is not enough. And then Gordon, he's, you know, being tardy to meetings and he's getting benched for like the first quarter. I don't know what's going to happen to him, but I do think that he won't be with the Patriots. Going forward, I, I, you know, like with this chance that he got, it, it's very, like, it's hard because when you're addicted to something, it's very, very hard for you to get away from it and to try to, you know, change your life. You got to, something inside you has to be stronger than the addiction. And I don't think that Gordon is ready. And it's unfortunate, but these are the type of things that we have to deal with as a society. The only issue is people are like, yo, why is this guy getting so many chances? And there's so many other people that, you know, are out there on the gridiron doing whatever. You know, our family members, they're out there trying to make teams, but then you're giving this guy a chance. It goes by talent, all right? Now, we know talent-wise, Gordon could be a monster. You know what I'm saying? We, we understand that. So I wanted to talk about that as well because if Tom, if you give Tom Brady decent weapons, there really isn't any... Um, there's not, there, there won't be any discussion about the Patriots going back to the Super Bowl. The issue and all the hysteria surrounding it is because he doesn't really have that that core, other than the Edelman, he do, what, what does he have? I, I don't know, you know, what, what he's doing at this point. Like, I don't, the way that his his staff has set up his offensive, um, his skilled positions with his wide receivers, you know, you got you got a, a wide receiver at a running back position last night. 
You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, so the Patriots are a different type of team. They do what's necessary to win. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands that now that week eight is in the books, going forward, you have to understand and analyze the situation. There is going to be a major, um, a major upgrade with the way that everything goes to the team. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be a major upgrade because, listen, think about it like this. Say they're able to put Gordon in the right mindset to be able to finish out the season. That would make sense that they're going to the Super Bowl and they could possibly beat the Chiefs. But the Chiefs are so red hot. I don't – like, that. that's what scares me. That The only team beating the Patriots, in my opinion – like, I don't want to put the Steelers there because I, like the, I think the Chiefs are way better than the Steelers. And when I say way better – the only reason that I'm saying way better is because the only person that I really fear on the Steelers offensively is Antonio Brown. And then when you take him away, which is what I would think the game plan would be, you got to get beat by Juju Smith-Schuster. Like, he'll make some big plays here and there, whatever. But they don't, you know what I'm saying, J, you know, James Con was it, John Connor, those guys, they're going to make some plays. But A.B. is really what makes that offense go. And if you notice, when they lose games, A.B. is pretty much locked up. The same way back in the day, like, Whatever star player you would lock up, if you would take away that one player, it changes the aspect of the game. So I would definitely, right now, I think the Chiefs are actually better than the Patriots. Like, if I did power rankings right now, I would go Chiefs, then uh, the Patriots, and then I probably, you know, it's like, I don't know where to go after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like where do I go? I, I think I probably got to put the Steelers there, but then I'm not sure about the Steelers. But I do think the Chiefs are the better team just because of the offensive weapons, all right? I'm not in any way saying like the GOAT, you know, Tom Brady is like, you know, a bum. The dude is, he does, he doesn't, just put it like this. If you give Tom Brady the weapons that Mahomes has, we don't, we don't need to talk about anything. It's sort of like they're the Golden State Warriors of the NFL. But because Tom Brady throughout his career, he's only had good receivers very, very, like, you know, Randy Moss was like a very, very short stint. People don't realize how small of a window that was compared to how long Dante Culpepper had Randy Moss. But Dante Culpepper was just a terrible quarterback. So it didn't really matter. All he knew how to do was throw the ball deep. That's pretty much like he wasn't a guy that was going to do anything else. He knew how to throw the ball deep, and it worked out for Randy Moss, made him a Hall of Famer. You know what I'm saying? But when you gave Tom Brady Randy Moss, he broke the touchdown record. He broke these – you see what I'm saying? Like, it's the different gauge. But we don't – we just expect Tom Brady to be great. Sort of like when you used to watch Michael Jordan. You just knew he was going to win in the finals. It didn't matter. So that's what we take advantage of, you know, with the Patriots. But it's a lot of other things that go into it. Like, defensively, they played well, but it's the Bills. You got, who was that, Anderson on the center for the Bills? Like, the Bills don't know what's going on. So nobody really expected anything from it. But we have to understand that now that this is all said and done, there's only a few teams that has the possibility of going to the Super Bowl from both sides. I would go Ram Saints on the NFC side, and I would go Chiefs. And Patriots on the on the AFC side. And that's pretty much it for me. If you guys don't agree with me, I would love to hear your picks. Because those are the four teams that I think it's going to all come down to. And I know I might be leaving out some of you guys' teams. But remember, I just watch each game and try to analyze it. I go back and watch replays. I try to make sure that I'm, you know, as upfront and, you know, I'm not trying to be biased about it. Those are the teams that, like, really jump out at me every time I watch them. Patriots, Chiefs, the Rams, and the Saints. Those teams are the like those four teams. It's gonna that that mixture. You could go ahead and write it down right now. Something of that mixture will be in the Super Bowl. The issue is, are they gonna play an Arrowhead or are they going down to go see Patriot the, the Patriots in the Boston? I'm like, bro, that's the only thing that it's gonna be home field advantage situation. Now I don't know coming forward how it work out for the Patriots, but I I I think the Patriots have the higher chance of losing games versus you know the Chiefs. So I think the Chiefs may get home field advantage. F F. They continue to play the way that they're playing, and all the haters are the saying that they're going to collapse if they don't collapse. But in all honesty, with this game, I don't think we expected anything from the Bills, so it's not a shocker, all right? There, there's no, like, major thing about it. Like, they lost. That's exactly what we thought, you know, thought that would happen. It's a division game, so it was a little bit more tough, but they, they ran away with it down the stretch, and it is what it is. And again, this dude Gordon, bro, if Gordon's addiction overtakes what they're trying to build for him, I don't like the Patriots' chances because that's losing something else, and I don't know where they'll get another receiver that'll be formidable uh, to help build this Patriots dynasty that they're trying to finish off with with another Super Bowl. So if you guys have any insight into it or you think that, you know, Gordon is going to come back and be well, that I can see being, like, you know, a little bit more dangerous for the Chiefs. But other than that, I really, really have to lean towards the Chiefs beating the Patriots if they don't get anything else. Thank you guys so much for watching the Week 8 Recap. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. One love.